the fairest one in sight. We grant your loftiness the right to some obscurity of cloud. It will not do to say of night, since dark is what brings out your light. Some mystery becomes the proud, but to be wholly taciturn in your reserve is not allowed. Say something to us, we can learn by heart, and when alone, repeat. Say something, and it says, I burn. But say with what degree of heat. Talk Fahrenheit, talk centigrade. Use language we can comprehend. Tell us what elements you blend. It gives us strangely little aid but does tell something in the end. And steadfast as Keats Eremite, not even stooping from its sphere, it asks a little of us here. It asks of us a certain height. So when at times the mob is swayed to carry praise or blame too far, we may choose something like a star to stay our minds on and be stayed once by the Pacific. The shattered water made a misty din. Great waves looked over others coming in and thought of doing something to the shore that water never did to land before. The clouds were low and hairy in the sky, like locks blown forward in the gleam of eyes. You could not tell, and yet it looked as if the shore was lucky in being backed by cliff, the cliff in being backed by continent. It looked as if a night of dark intent was coming, and not only a night, an age. Someone had better be prepared for rage. There would be more than ocean water broken before God's last put out the light was spoken. The gift outright. The land was ours before we were the land. She was our land more than a hundred years before we were her people. She was ours in Massachusetts, in Virginia, but we were England, still colonial, possessing what we still were unpossessed by, possessed by what we now no more possess. Something we were withholding made us weak until we found out that it was ourselves. We were withholding from our land of living and forthwith found salvation in surrender. Such as we were, we gave ourselves outright. The deed of gift was many deeds of war to the land vaguely realizing westward, but still unstory, artless, unenhanced, such as she was, such as she would become. one step backward taken. Not only sands and gravels were once more on their travels, but gulping muddy gallons, great boulders off their balance, bumped heads together gullies and started down the gully. Whole capes caked off in slices. I felt my standpoint shaken in the universal crisis, but with one step backward taken, I saved myself from going. The world torn loose went by me, then the rain stopped, 
and the blowing, and the sun came out to dry me. An ant on the tablecloth ran into a dormant moth of many times his size. He showed not the least surprise. His business wasn't with such. He gave it scarcely a touch and was off on his duty run. But if he encountered one of the hive's inquiry squad, whose work is to find out God and the nature of time and space, he would put him on to the king. Answer a curious race, one crossing with hurried tread the body of one of their dead, isn't given a moment's arrest, seems not even impressed. But he no doubt reports to any with whom he crosses antennae, and they no doubt report to the higher upper court. Then word goes forth in Formic, death come to Jerry McCormick, our selfless forager Jerry. Will the special Janizary, whose office it is to bury the dead of the commissary, go bring him home to his people, lay him in state on a steeple, wrap him for shroud in a petal, and bomb him with ichor of nettle? This is the word of your queen. And presently on the scene appears a solemn mortician, and taking formal position with feelers calmly at twiddle, seizes the dead by the middle, and heaving him high in air, carries him out of there. No one stands round to stare, it is nobody else's affair. It couldn't be called ungentle, but how thoroughly departmental. Two tramps in mud time. Out of the mud, two strangers came and caught me splitting wood in the yard. And one of them put me off my aim by hailing cheerily, hit them hard. I knew pretty well why he dropped behind and let the other go on away. I knew pretty well what he had in mind. He wanted to take my job for pay. Good blocks of oak it was, I split, as large around as the chopping block. And every piece I squarely hit fell splinterless as a cloven rock. The blows that are like self-control spares to strike the day giving loose to my soul I spent on the unimportant wood. The sun was warm, but the wind was chill. You know how it is with an April day when the sun is out and the wind is still. You're one month on in the middle of May. But if you so much as dare to speak, a cloud comes over the sunlit arch, a wind comes off for frozen peak, and you're two months back in the middle of March. A bluebird comes tenderly up to a light and turns to the wind to unruffle a plume. His song so pitched as not to excite a single flower as yet to bloom. It is snowing a flake, and he half knew winter was only playing possum, except in color he isn't blue, but he wouldn't advise the thing to blossom. The time when most I loved my task, these two must make me love it more by coming with what they came to ask. You'd think I never felt before the weight of an axe head, poised aloft, the grip on earth of outspread feet, the life of muscles rocking soft and smooth, moist and vernal heat. Out of the woods, two hulking tramps from sleeping God knows where last night, <clears throat> but not long since in the lumber camps. They thought all chopping was theirs of right. Men of the woods and lumberjacks, they judged me by their appropriate tools. Except as the fellow handled an axe, they had no way of knowing a fool. Nothing on either side was said. They knew they had but to stay their stay, and all their logic would fill my head as that I had no right to play with what was another man's work for gain. My right might be love, but theirs was need. And where the two exist in twain, theirs was the better right agreed. But yield who will to their separation. My object in living is to unite my avocation and my vocation as my two eyes make one in sight. Only where the love and me are one, and the work is play for mortal stakes, is the deed ever really done for heaven and the future sakes. Hello.
controls don't like skateboards. Well, not to mention roller skates. Oh, oh ah, Controls hate roller skates. Well, okay, we won't even mention roller skates. Um, this is interesting because it goes a long way back to the control and the control archives. Most recently coming to mind is an episode in Pittsburgh upon leaving Sino's office when I ran a yellow light turning left from Buchanan onto railroad and somebody in a big pickup truck was turning right from the opposite side of Buchanan and I was in my own lane and he in his but fuck if the old geezer at the wheel didn't turn his head and scream at me as we con-